Hello everybody! This is just a short peek inside the California Academy of Sciences, which is a museum situated in Golden Gate Park near the De Young Art Museum and the Japanese Tea Garden. So first of all, just to get you familiar with the building, it is a natural history museum, and their claim to fame is that it's the only place on the planet with an aquarium, a planetarium, a natural history museum, and a four-story rainforest, including a flooded level, all under one roof. And speaking of the roof, it's a living roof which, um, in which um, vegetation grows on top. It, um, it releases heat and keeps the building cool, and it also um, handles water reclamation and other things. The first portion of the building was built in 1853. Um, it was pretty much destroyed in the 1906 earthquake, and then it was again significantly damaged in the 1989 earthquake. And then a fire broke out in the astronomy wing uh, and destroyed the planetarium in 2002. So uh, the builders completely rebuilt this, and it reopened in September 2008. And by the way, what you're seeing right now is the snake pit exhibit. Um, and this is the animatronic snake that was used in Anaconda. Uh, in a second, I'll pan over to another part of the, uh, the snake pit. And in the snake pit, there's this water display. It's kind of like a choreographed, uh, <laughs> some kind of water show. And I'm not sure exactly why it's here, but I don't know, the kids seem to like it. Uh, I'll let this play for a little bit and then we'll move on to the next area. And now I'm inside the enclosed rainforest, and I'm on the first floor. It's called the Borneo Forest Floor, and there you can see all the different vegetation that grows on the floor. And there are also flying lizards, gliding frogs, fruit-eating bats, and other animals. But <laughs> they're not out in the open. They're all enclosed in exhibits. And now, I, hmm, where the hell am I now? I think I'm at, yes, okay, it's still the first floor. This is the macaw exhibit, and you can see the macaws that are on the um, uh, on that tree. I think they have three in this rainforest, if I'm not mistaken. By the way, you'll also see butterflies, all different species of butterflies flying around the um, the rainforest enclosure, mostly in the upper levels, and you'll see them a lot more once I head up to the second level. And now this is the second level. Uh, sorry about the shaky camera, but um, I'm just trying to show off the sheer size of this rainforest. And um, it's pretty impressive for being indoors. Um, there's the flooded area. That flooded area um, extends an entire level below and then into an aquarium. And then you can actually see the lower portion of that through glass in the um, Steinhardt Aquarium downstairs. Uh, let's see what else is happening in this. I think you can start seeing some of the um, the birds and the butterflies in the um, enclosure. Um, or maybe not. We might have to wait until we get up to the third level. And now this is the third level. 
Um, the butterflies are mostly on this level, and I think it's because the, they are attracted to this particular type of vegetation on this section of the canopy. Um, there's some up there. There's the roof that allows uh, sunlight to penetrate. And there's also misters you might have seen up there. It's a uh, misting uh, apparatus at the top, constantly and continuously uh, keeps this entire area moist. And it is very hot and humid in this rainforest, so you can't really spend <laughs> more than maybe 20 minutes uh, messing around in here. And I'm approaching the exit point, which is a set of elevators that um, take you back down. Actually, they can take you all the way down to the aquarium where you can see the flooded rainforest. Um, sorry about my finger there. Oh, well. Um, and before you enter the elevator, you every uh, patron has to make sure that butterflies haven't hitched a ride in your jacket or on your shoulder or somewhere else on your person because they do try to escape obviously um, it's in their nature to escape so you always have to like brush off any butterflies that are um, uh, hit, hit, that have hitched a ride and someone did hitch a ride on me I had to brush one off my shoulder which of course you just like gently kind of brush it off and it goes flying away And now I'm in the lower area. It's called the Steinhardt Aquarium, but this is actually an extension of the rainforest. It's called the Flooded Amazon Rainforest. And in this area, you'll find uh, tropical fish that are typical of South American rainforests. There's also a few schools of piranha in here, and there's also an anaconda, but I don't know where the anaconda is. I never found it. And now we're at another exhibit in the Amazonian rainforest area um, in the basement. This is the freshwater stingray exhibit. Um, there are several species of stingrays in this tank. I'm just not sure what species they are. Um, it's well, It could just be called a spotted stingray. That's what it looks like. Yeah. And this is another huge tank. It's a um, separate tank from the rest of the exhibits. It's called the Philippine Coral Reef. And it includes um, fish like uh, upside down jellyfish, flashlight fish, there's some garden eels in there. And I think there's over several hundred uh, species of fish in this particular coral reef. And lastly, here's a tank of saphonophores, also called jellyfish. These particular ones are found off the coast of Northern California. I'm not sure what species the ones in this tank uh, belong to, but um, they are glow in the dark, and um, it's a blue protein, uh, or actually probably a green protein that, that glows. Uh, <laughs> yeah, see, like they're, they're just uh, uh, projecting artificial color against the jellyfish. I think it's a green protein that causes the jellyfish to glow in the dark. And that wraps up my visit of the California Academy of Sciences. If you want to learn more about it or visit the Academy yourself, you can just follow the link that I gave in the description. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one.